So very good morning, everyone. I hope you are doing well. This is my lecture number 78 of my lecture series. Yeah, I'm going to cover the question themes 21 to 30 uh, and forms part three of the SCE recall for the recently concluded exam in June 2024. Uh, part one was for all subscribers. Part two was exclusively for the paid subscribers. And this is part three of the uh, question themes uh, which appeared in the recent exam. So let's start right away. So question number 21, here we have a type two diabetic pregnant patient. Uh, medications wise, they had asked for which medication will reduce the risk of preeclampsia. The correct answer is aspirin. And this comes from the guidelines of hypertension in pregnancy, diagnosis and management published by NICE and updated in April, 2023. Uh, this is the NICE guideline, NG133. This clearly advises the pregnant woman at high risk of preeclampsia to take 75 to 150 mg of aspirin daily from 12 weeks of gestation until the birth of the baby. The women who are at high risk are any of the following. They can be those who are having a hypertensive disease during a previous pregnancy, prior history of chronic kidney disease, autoimmune disease such as SLE or antiphospholipid syndrome, type 1 or type 2 diabetics as well. So very important to note that gestational diabetes does not come in this high-risk category. So any type 1 or type 2 diabetic pregnant patient should receive aspirin. And also in those patients with prior history of chronic hypertension. So this comes from the NICE guidelines, extremely important for the exams. Question number 22, a young male, and they had given a scenario for primary adrenal insufficiency with uh, severe paraplegia on clinical examination and a strong positive family history as regards the same. So the correct answer was X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy. They had asked what is the clinical scenario relating to. Adrenoleukodystrophy is an X-linked dominant uh, disorder, extremely important from the exam perspective. It is caused by mutations in the X-linked ALD gene that encodes the peroxisomal transporter protein a, B, C, D, 1. Again, this statement has been asked as a question in the previous exams. It affects 1 in 20,000 males. It is diagnosed by measuring the very long chain fatty acids. This repeatedly has been asked in the previous exams. These VLC FAs cannot be oxidized in peroxisomes and therefore they accumulate in the tissues and the circulation. This disorder presents in childhood and adolescence progresses in 50% to quadriparesis and dementia in association with adrenal failure. And this is typically referred to as cerebral adrenal leukodystrophy as in our patient in our uh, question. There is also a milder variant which causes spinal neurology only that is referred to as adrenomyelopathy. And uh, adrenal insufficiency may precede manifestations of neurological symptoms. And in 10 to 20% of the cases, Adrenal insufficiency may be the sole manifestation of the disease. Question scenario 23, a 45-year-old male on testosterone replacement therapy and now his prostatic-specific antigen on blood biochemistry is found to be 5 nanogram per ml. What is the next step? Next step is urological consultation. So this comes from the Endocrine Society guidelines on the testosterone therapy in men with hypogonadism, which was published in March 2018. This is the section on prostate monitoring for men 55 to 69 years of age and for men 40 to 69 years of age who are at increased risk for prostate cancer, who choose prostate monitoring, always perform digital rectal examination and check PSA before initiating testosterone treatment. Check PSA and again perform DRE 3 to 12 months after initiating testosterone treatment as well. And then in accordance with guidelines for prostate cancer screening, depending upon the age and the race of the patient. Obtain urological consultation if there is an increase in the serum PSA concentration greater than 1.4 nanogram per ml within 12 months of initiating testosterone therapy. And this they are referring to as from the baseline. So for example, if the baseline level was two, and if there is the value is now 3.4, then it is a indication for urological consultation. On the other hand, an absolute value or a confirmed PSA of more than four nanogram per ml at any time. Like in our patient, we have five nanogram per ml. Again, this is an indication for urological consultation. 
detection of a prostatic abnormality on digital rectal examination or even substantial worsening of the lower urinary tract symptoms all this warrant a urological consultation and this is as per the guidelines of endocrine society question theme 24 this is a scenario they had given of a patient who had a very high triglycerides uh, of more than 1000 mg per deciliter which is more than 11.3 millimole per liter the patient had got a clinical presentation of acute pancreatitis secondary to the severely elevated high triglycerides also there was evidence of hypocalcemia and lactic acidosis in the blood biochemistry the best treatment option among the options provided was variable rate intravenous insulin infusion or vriii so what's the logic behind this and what's the mechanism by which the insulin works in this scenario again this has been asked in the previous exams so insulin decreases the vldl triglyceride production and also lowers the serum triglyceride levels by enhancing lipoprotein lipase so this is a particular thing which they had asked in the previous exams this is an enzyme which accelerate accelerates chylomicron and vldl metabolism to glycerol and fatty free acids insulin also inhibits hormone sensitive lipase in adipocytes which is the key enzyme for breaking down adipocyte triglyceride and releasing fatty acids into the circulation so studies have shown that iv insulin as a continuous infusion is effective in patients with severe hypertriglyceridemia with and without type 2 diabetes so even if the patient does not have a background history of type 2 diabetes uh, uh, using a uh, insulin infusion is highly effective for hypertriglyceridemia induced pancreatitis this is a general approach to management of an adult patient with hypertriglyceridemic pancreatitis so manage acute pancreatitis of course with iv fluids and pain control does the patient with hypertriglyceridemia have one of the following so we are looking here at the worrisome features like hypocalcemia lactic acidosis two or more signs of worsening inflammation and worsening organ dysfunction or multi organ failure if any of these are present then first and foremost if we have plasma pharesis available which is not available in majority of the centers and it was not given in the option for this patient scenario as well if present then initiate plasma pharesis is the first line and monitor serum triglycerides after each cycle discontinue plasma pharesis when serum triglycerides are less than 500 mg per deciliter or less than 5.6 millimole per liter severe dietary fat restriction fat content less than 5% of the diet until the triglyceride levels are less than 11.2 millimole per liter then when the serum triglyceride levels are less than 11.2 millimole per liter initiate long term pharmacological and non pharmacological measures to lower triglycerides like fibrins if the plasma pharesis is unavailable or patient is unable to tolerate plasma pharesis then as in this patient scenario since plasma pharesis was not available in the option we initiate Uh, variable rate intravenous in, in, uh, insulin infusion and we should monitor blood, blood glucose every hour and the triglycerides every 12 hours while the patient is on the vriii the and discontinue insulin for management of hypertriglycerides when the triglycerides have come down to less than 5.6 millimole per liter so extremely important in clinical practice as well as for exams on the other hand if the patient does not have any of the above worrisome features then we always look into it if the patient has got hyperglycemia or not if the patient has not got hyperglycemia then we stick to these measures which we mentioned like dietary fat restriction and then uh, we do a fat content less than 5% of the diet until the serum triglycerides drop down to below 11.2 then we monitor serum triglycerides every 12 hours until it is less than 5.6 and when the serum triglycerides are less than 11.2 we initiate long term pharmacological and non pharmacological measures to lower the triglycerides on the other hand if the patient is hyperglycemic but does not have those worrisome features of uh, uh, acute pancreatitis still we initiate intravenous regular insulin then we monitor blood glucose every hour and triglycerides every 12 hours and rest of the principles are the same as we discussed previously so again a very important chart for management of adult patient with hypertriglyceridemic pancreatitis question theme 25 which of the following is a typical imaging finding of a benign adrenal adenoma so amongst the options given the correct answer was ct attenuation values or unenhanced ct attenuation values of less than or equal to 10 hounsfields so these are some of the 
uh, imaging characteristics of benign adenomas. They, sh- they are usually round and homogeneous density, smooth contour and sharp margination. The diameter is usually, usually less than 4 cm. It is usually unilateral, low enhanced CT attenuation values, as was the answer in this question. ISO intensity with liver on both T1 and T2 weighted MRI sequences and chemical shift evidence of lipid on MRI. These are all characteristics of benign adrenal adenoma. What about in the delayed contrast enhanced CT? On delayed contrast enhanced CT, the rapidity of the contrast medium washout will help us distinguish between adrenal adenoma and non-adenomas. 10 minutes after administration of contrast, an absolute contrast medium washout of more than 50% was reported to be 100% sensitive and specific for adenoma. When patients with adenomas uh, compared to those with carcinomas, pheos, or metastasis. So this was found to be uh, suggestive of benign adenoma, adren- a washout of more than 50%, uh, 10 minutes after administration of contrast. So that's the end of my free view. And if you like access to the full lecture, which is the full 10 themes from 21 to 30, please subscribe to my lecture series. All paid subscribers will be given lifetime access to all my 78 lectures which are existing lectures plus all the upcoming new videos and lectures for subscription please email me to my email id which is mazirules at gmail.com or you can simply whatsapp me on 0097155743794 thank you hope you enjoyed this session and wish you all all the very best